Hello there. I'm Kayla, and today I want to talk about how birth control affects our brains and our emotions. So today I wanted to do a little bit of a deeper dive, so I hope you stick with me and uh, you'll learn a little bit more about your body and how it works. So first I wanted to talk about um, the gut-brain connection. So if you haven't watched my last video about gut health and what can affect it, I'm going to link that right up here so you can take a watch of that after this video is over. So the gut-brain connection is that we have these nerves that actually are like wrapped around and in between and kind of knit into our intestine um, path. And so um, they don't necessarily go deep in, but they're wrapped around our intestines and they go back to our spine and then back up to our brain. And so this means that we have a very direct connection between our gut and our intestines and our brain and therefore we have some things that can happen it can affect neurotransmitters very quickly it can affect our mood very quickly if we have an irritated gut that can influence our personality and how we're acting that day so if we have an inflamed gut we can have somewhat of an inflamed brain in a way and our mood can be really um, on edge or irritable or depressive and so some of this is part of how birth control can affect our brain. And so if you haven't watched that video, it goes through how birth control can affect our gut health. And this is kind of one of those secondary features of if it affects our gut health, how can it affect our mood? So if it's causing more gut inflammation and imbalances and stress in that area, then we're going to have further downhill effects that um, could affect our mood and Put, make us more likely to experience mood imbalances that could be chronic. And in part of this, when we're taking hormonal birth control, it is going to affect our stress response. And that is really important to know because we have certain hormones in our body that help us, one, manage stress in a healthy way, and two, we have that so that we can recover and stop the stress response. And so some of how birth control works is going to dysregulate some of those hormones, specifically cortisol and how cortisol works, how much we produce, and its recovery. And so we're more apt to experience stress in a chronic way when we're on hormonal birth control because of how it affects our stress response and some of the hormones and glands that produce those hormones. What researchers have been finding along with this, which I find really, really interesting, is that women who are on hormonal birth control, some of their stress response dysregulation mimics that of people who have PTSD and who have experienced a traumatic experience in their life and their stress response has been dysregulated. So some of those similarities I think are really intriguing and we'll go through a little bit of them today. What can happen is when our stress response gets dysregulated, what that can also lead to are changes in how our brain is working. So we have these parts of our brain, our medial prefrontal cortex is going to kind of be a, what Bessel van Kolk calls our watchtower for our amygdala. And our amygdala is kind of like the fire alarm uh, is what he calls it and smart smoke alarm. And so if we have smoke from cooking an egg and maybe it just got a little too hot versus a fire in our home, those are two different situations, but our amygdala responds regardless. So it's kind of like a smoke detector where it just detects smoke and it doesn't see the overarching picture of what's going on. It's going to alert you. So our amygdala is going to send a stress response, but we have this part of our brain, this prefrontal cortex that can tell the amygdala, oh, this isn't something that we need to overreact to and calm the stress response back down or prevent it from even happening. And so what can happen is some of those parts of our brain can actually be restructured because of this dysregulated stress response. So some parts might become more atrophied and some might become stronger. So that depends on signaling that our body sends and these hormones are those signals. So what can happen is if you have a disconnect between your amygdala and your prefrontal cortex, which is kind of somewhat disconnected from what we can tell in studies about hormonal birth control, that connection is disrupted and or slightly disconnected when we're on those types of contraceptives. And so what can happen is, think about that, you've disconnected the watchtower from the smoke detector. So you are more likely to have things that are not heavy stressors be more uh, stressful 
they can be experienced as more stressful. And the pre medial prefrontal cortex is part of what tells us who we are and what we're experiencing in life. So that in and of itself could change for some women. Next, I'm gonna talk about emotions. And so how birth control can affect our emotions starts in our brain because that's part of how we experience emotions. Now, I already talked about stressful situations. So we could experience stress, any type of stress in a more amplified way. That could be depression, um, that could be anger, that could be other mood imbalances um, that we we might not have been aware of. And some of that we do know. It does show in research that hormonal birth control can affect partner selection. It can affect our oxytocin levels in response to our partner. And so what that means is it's controlling possibly a little bit of how we feel towards our partner. That love and bonding hormone is not going to be as present in response to our partner when we're on hormonal birth control. So how can that affect when we're in a relationship with another human and we have life happen, you might be less likely to forgive that person. You might be less apt to be more understanding of them. You won't have the same necessarily um, affinity to um, encourage bonding with that person, including things like sex. So those are things to consider. And it might not be completely dampened for everyone, but it is affected in most people. Um, so these are things to consider of how it's affecting our emotions. And one of those emotions could be love for the person that we've chosen to be in our life as our partner. So that is part of how it could affect that. It can affect how angry we are, how sad we are, how depressed we are, and how we manage stressful situations. So whether we shut down, because some people do the freeze, some people do fight, some people do flight. And so those could all be factors of how birth control is affecting our emotions um, when we have some of these disrupted hormone responses. Now, I just want to add in this part right here that we might want to consider that if we met our partner on hormonal birth control and then we discontinue hormonal birth control at some point in our relationship, possibly to get pregnant, we could have different feelings for that partner. We also, if we didn't take hormonal birth control, met our partner and then start hormonal birth control because we come, become sexually active with that person, that can affect how that relationship goes. So I think these are things that women and men should be aware of that could be factors in their relationship. Not that hormonal birth control is to blame for any relationship issues. I think that you can um, have a healthy relationship despite some of those, but if it is drastically affecting your relationship, your marriage, those are things to consider when you might be considering the health of your body holistically. How is your body and any medication you're taking affecting your life and the quality of your life? Could it be affecting your relationship with your partner and um, possibly how uh, you are responding to other situations, whether that be with your partner or even at work or at home with your children? So these are things that I don't think many women are aware of how far this could affect their lives, but I think that it's something that we should be starting to learn about. Next, I want to talk about some of the hormones that are used in hormonal birth control. And the first is estrogen. So when we take hormonal birth control, some types of birth control include a synthetic estrogen. So what's going to happen is you're taking a synthetic estrogen, your body doesn't have to produce estrogen. And so that type of estrogen that our body produces will look different than a synthetic version. And as I've mentioned in some of my other videos, there are receptors throughout our body, including our brain for estrogen and other hormones that are produced for our sexual reproduction. And for example, estrogen, when it becomes low, endogenous levels, that means the kind that we produce inside our body, endo meaning inside, that can affect how we have our mood. So the biggest impactor here of estrogen levels being decreased, for example, in peri or menopause, um, they can cause depression because we have certain signaling regulation in our brain that is controlled by endogenous estrogen. So when those levels drop because our body doesn't need to produce them because we're on a synthetic hormone, then that can affect our mood and possibly cause more anxiety and depression because of the type of receptor that it links with, which I believe is the GABA receptor from the research that I've done. 
Next is progesterone. So we have studies that show that males actually do produce progesterone from their adrenal cortex. So this shows that it actually has more purpose than just for our reproductive health because men wouldn't have it unless it was used for other things. And it has been shown to be something that could be protective to our central nervous system, including our brain, our spinal cord, and um, our parts of our brain. And so some of those things being protective means that they could be calming effects and they are neuroprotective, meaning that they help with preventing degeneration and nerve cells and tissue is really difficult to regenerate and it's really difficult to um, sustain its life once it becomes damaged. Nerve damage is really difficult to heal in general and so keeping in mind that when someone is on a progesterone alternative for birth control, their body is not going to produce as much progesterone and there are going to be receptors in our body that might not necessarily be prone to um, being as sustained and healthy because it's not getting a hormone that it regularly needs in order to protect itself. So one of the last few things that I wanted to bring to people's attention is that hormonal birth control has higher levels of um, women with depression when they're using it, and they have a higher rate of committing suicide. So if you know someone who might be having some of these issues, I encourage you to reach out to them and check in with them because we don't know what could impact and make a difference in their life. And these are factors that women might need to consider, especially if they're working with a psychologist or a psychiatrist about other factors that could be affecting their mental health. But this is something that I think is really important, and I don't know why women aren't being taught about this when they're making the choice to take a hormonal contraceptive. So if you know someone who's making that choice, I encourage you to share some of these videos with them so they know what their, their body has the potential of having as an effect and what um, could help with supporting their overall health if they already have mental health issues. So I do wanna share that I am a proponent and I'm very grateful for all of the forms of birth control that we have, but I do think that we should go into any decision that we make about our body, body with an informed and educated choice. So that's why I'm sharing this information. I'm not sharing it to scare anybody, but I do wanna make sure that women have the knowledge of what could be affecting and so they can understand if something's not working well for them and their body, they can make an educated choice about other options that might be able to help support their overall wellness. I did a lot of research for this video specifically. I encourage you to read some of it in the description. I've provided a lot of links about study and research that have been done on oral contraceptives, especially neuro uh, biological health. So I encourage you to, uh, like I said before, take ownership for your own knowledge and understanding of your body and read through some of that. I hope this was helpful and until next time, be well.